Clay. Hey, everyone. Hi, Clay. Hi, Clay. How's it going? You. Yeah. Oh, this is really weird to watch. Sorry. Sorry to. Sorry to be uh, the weird one in the mirror. Just don't pay any attention to me. It's not hard. You're like the big owl in the room with the loudest voice. No. Oh. We can't see you. No, okay. Can't see you. You know, so that's, the, you know that's the big the screen. Bummer is that this is what does that. So that won't get us. Yeah. I don't think I, I, I left that connection. You don't happen to have, uh, Sarah, you don't happen to have a little thumb I usually do, but. No, I usually don't. It's like, what are you looking for? At my house. An adapter. Uh, an adapter to get my USB. Oh, this one, too, right? Like, uh, I just can't even keep up with technology. Yeah. You guys can hear me, right? No problem. We can hear you. I can okay. see. Okay. Oh, well, yeah. That's great. yeah, that's fine. Um, yeah, I apologize for the monkey wrench last minute. I my son had to go to urgent care. He's okay, but he had a reaction to some medication he just started taking. So a little bit scary, but he I think he's going to be okay. So, I mean, he, he's definitely going to be okay. So. Good. Cool. Glad to hear that. You have to go at any point. <laughs> don't even say you. Don't even be polite. You know. No one can see that you're off camera and muted. <laughs> yeah, uh, all right. Well, I guess if uh, if we're good here, I think only person we might be waiting on is Sarah, but we'll get started and she can go. So, um, first things first, welcome to the April 26th Parks, Parks and Trails Committee meeting. Um, We'll do a quick roll call here. So we have uh, Sarah Stans. Yeah. Uh, Clay Bolt. Here. Gene uh, Savini. I should know how to say this by now, but Gene. Yeah. Here. <laughs> Robert. Bob Bell. Uh, uh, and Sarah Hubbard. Hi. All right. Well, Tim Stevens is uh, absent today and no point in him either. So. Um, cool. So first up on the agenda is the approval of minutes from March 22nd regular meeting. Um, they were sent out as part of the agenda packet. So um, yeah, do we have any? So moved to approve. She moves. So seconds uh, all four. Hi. Hi. Oh. Great. Cool. Well, they are approved then. Um, with no edits. And next up, we have some new business. First item on the agenda would be the Parks and Trails budget priorities. Uh, this was on a slate for last meeting and is uh, now this month. So, uh, Grant, I guess I'll kind of let you take it from here in terms of some of the budget work you've been doing. Mm -hmm. And then we can. See where this yeah, fantastic. Thank you, Connor. I um, uh, apologize for not being present at the last meeting. I do, however, want to get the Parks and Trails Committee's um, budget priorities and, and get an understanding of those projects that are of most interest uh, to you folks as I finish putting the budget together, at least the manager's recommended budgets, whether that is the finally adopted budget, the, only the commission knows. And um, so, uh, yeah, I know that there are a number of park projects that we have discussed um, in my six months here, but don't want to pollute the conversation with my thoughts or recollection. I would prefer to turn it over to you to hear your budget priorities and interests um, and Probably related to parks and trails. <laughs> oh, we have many thoughts on, on budgets. Uh, yeah, no, parks and trails related. We'll keep it there. Uh, yeah, so I guess kind of homework from our February meeting was to think about projects and come uh, armed with some priorities. Um, obviously, the Trails Neck Transportation Plan uh, had a nice list of project priorities that I think we all agreed were, were in a good order, but happy to kind of uh, it up to everybody here to comment on specific projects for the upcoming year. If there's anything that, uh, well, could you just clarify first, um, what projects are already going forward? Like I, I think in the budget from last year, 
for example, was the master plan, mm -hmm. Parks Master Plan. Mm -hmm. Is that still going forward? Mm -hmm. And then um, there was second, do we have park playground equipment? Is there more going on with that that's happening? Um, at this point, not to the best of my knowledge, I think that we accomplished all the work that we set out to do there, but I'm looking over to Mike. Yeah, and we got a, a swing set to put in, so there you go. it might be replacing the swing set. Okay. Okay. And then let's see, skate park crack ceiling is next year, right? And tennis court resurfacing, is that, that's not for a while. That was done this last year. Uh, um, yeah. Miles Park fence is for the next fiscal year. That's coming up. Um, Green Acres drinking fountain was that already put in? Yes, yeah, not put in yet. But I mean, that's still going to go for the summer. Yeah. Okay. Um, and what about okay? In the second we park gazebo roof Completed. and floating islands. I don't know about the lagoon improvements. Mm -hmm. Is that the big project? Like yeah. Greening and it's, dredging. And it's for, it says here it's for 250000 for next year. It includes 110 from the CIP and 140 from grants. Mm -hmm. Is that still happening? So, to the best of my knowledge, um, the um, two separate projects, you know, one is the dredging. And that is still being evaluated, I believe, by the Public Works Department. Okay. And so um, we don't have a plan to move forward on that. We're still in the concept development phase on that one. And that the islands, the floating islands, were, is my understanding, right. a follow on right. project to that. So, right. okay. Um, okay. Okay. So it's all. And then the last one that was on there was Trails and Active Transportation Plan Improvements. Um, there was 200,000 anticipated for. Sidewalk connection gout and Bennett between and in park. Does that sound right? I can say that we are, as I put together this budget, we are evaluating sidewalk connections. And okay. so I will. Um, there are a few around the schools um, that have okay. popped up as, as areas of, of somewhat concern, but okay. I will make sure that that one makes it into the conversation as well. Okay. Okay. Okay, I just wanted to clarify where we were first. Okay. So, and looking back at what we have recommended, the big one to me is some of the signage mm -hmm. um, as far as budgets go. Don't you think, Connor? I mean, I was trying to go through what our recommendations have been to the city commission to date. The big one is, is signage and then um, um, Reservoir Park. Yeah. We're two outstanding ones. What else have we recommended? Well, yeah, I can take a peek at the uh, document actually. Maybe the annual report indicated what we've recommended? Yeah. That's what I'm thinking if I can find it. I'm going to take a Green Acres Park. Small things. Small capital projects, but they're already getting the water pump. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 and the wayfinding, which is slightly different than wayfinding strategy, is way different than the. Yeah, we, there's no policy on that yet. Yeah. And what we had recommended is that we'd be glad to help. If the city wanted to develop a wayfinding strategy first, so I, I'd be happy to address that one a bit. Um, we are currently evaluating um, proposals in response to our RFP for brand development services, and one component of that service is um, assistance with developing signage or at least templates for signs, mm -hmm. and all of that will eventually tie into the growth policy strategy, or there are several growth policy strategies around wayfinding, uh, historic and cultural signage, and then kind of parks and trail signage as well. And so um, I think we'll touch upon this a little bit later with the, the adopted trail, but we'll hit on it now. Um, once we have 
So there will be parallel efforts. We'll be working with the brand new consultant to mm -hmm. kind of come up with, you know, what that signage looks like. And then once we have that part settled, um, or as we get that settled, we will be reaching out to parks and trails for um, help with wayfinding and general, just general park signage, to be honest with you. Um, and then we'll also work with some other advisory committees, mm -hmm. historic preservation, yep. um, and some others to come up with, you know, all, you know, different types of wayfinding signs. And then we'll bring those together in some sort of cohesive signage plan and then roll that out. My hope is that we will have the branding from that consultant done by the fall, and then would be able to hopefully work on sign locations and roll out over the winter um, for actual placing of signs in the spring, you know, somewhere about a year from now. So that would be the next fiscal year that we're talking about now for budget. Yes, I. so I actually am going to be putting money in the budget for the general signage and wayfinding project okay. in the 24 budget. Good. Yeah. You know, and early on, when I first started, there was the Banshell mural, the mural? mural project. Yeah, because there was early on, there was some pre-pandemic, there was some local businesses that had offered some funding, and then there was the original mural artwork um, creators, and then they had given permission that they didn't mind that the mural had been updated. Um, there was a bit of a falling out from the businesses and Mike at the time, I think. Um, and then we had some, and then so it kind of died, and then I picked it up, and then um, I think the question was that it would have to be resurfaced, and then what were some of the maintenance requirements of that structure before we commissioned an artist? Or and so there was nothing. Didn't we asked the city if, if that band shell needed something? Yeah. What did the city say? We didn't really get much. What? I mean, do you know what the if it doesn't need it? I guess the question is, is it a priority to do a mural one? I don't just I don't know anything about it. Uh, I have recently spoken to Mike Gomez and I was, he was gonna go through the band shell with me. But that's all I know about it right now. And there were some improvements, was it for Expedition Church or someone did some basic improvements, I think. Yeah, I mean Lindy's painted the floor and uh, Expedition Church worked on the steps on the back side of it. Right. Or to redo, I mean, the, the crux of it all was that the, because it's got that anti-graffiti paint on it, it would have to be replastered to receive a new mural. But I, I'm not, not that's a priority, it's just a question of- Yeah, it has an anti-graffiti paint on it, then the mural's not going to go on it very well. <laughs> yes, <laughs> maybe nothing. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know if it's a, that is a priority, um, but if it, we're talking about the plan, you know, making spaces um, are activated, that's kind of what they call it, the terminology through, with artwork and murals. And, and that's some of the kind of low capital projects that we can do that aren't, if we can't do projects that are shovel ready. Well, I can tell you that public art is certainly a recognized strategy and growth policy, and then the city commission is moving forward with um, at least one public art project with related to the underpass. Yep. And yes. so, okay. um, uh, you know, I, I could say that thank you for bringing the band shell to our attention. We will we'll learn what we don't know about it, and then um, yeah, there will also be a larger effort around public arts out of here okay. as well. So that we've talked about some maintenance stuff, and I think at the last meeting, and Bob, you brought up some of this Myers Riverview Trail that got hit by the flood pretty hard. They did a lot of work there with the gravel, and um, there's still a huge amount of debris there. But there was also some damage to that big structure that you go through the um, channel and over by the river, and um, I think Shannon is who mentioned it to me months ago. Is there any, um, and that was, geez, I, sent, I sent you the email about who it was that the Artemis out of Bozeman did the original work on that, um, that whole area for Myers Riverview Trail. I'm wondering if we want to do a little restoration for some of that artwork that, that got damaged. It may be that it 
won't be the same thing. The wind chimes seem fine, the metal <laughs> wind chimes, but that wooden structure um, is got hit pretty hard. Mm -hmm. So that's another option for some restoration. Not, I don't know about how much more improvement it needs, but mm -hmm. there's a, just a huge amount of debris still there too. But maybe that just disintegrates over time. That would be another problem. What about Mayor's Landing? And there was that $5,000 that was allocated and either delineating that fencing or putting compost on some of the glass that's out there that's exposed from landfill. Well, I'm not sure if the 5,000 was just for that. Maybe you could answer it, but the, I thought part of that 5,000 was to do some of the initial work after the park, after that area became available and like okay. there was they did the fencing for the parking area mm -hmm. um so i don't know how much money is for additional work but that area might use some additional work because we get complaints all the time about soil eroding the way around glass and the danger to dogs and stuff yeah. and i know which i think i mentioned to you the girl scouts had um asked about maybe going into a posture for a fence between their property close to, closer to the driving range, um, if if the city was interested in delineating more of that new park area, so that could still happen. Excellent feedback. Thank you. And I, I would say that Reservoir Park is is a conversation that we're having mm -hmm. as well for. Um, for funding next year's budget. Okay. And what about Highway 89 bike path? You guys do the cleanup on it, but are there is there more work that you want you would suggest be done on that? I mean the surfacing, resurfacing from now Billman Lane that it kind of ends. I don't know if that's the county line where they kind of stop paving where they widen the road. I mean it does go past Murdoch's and kind of more of that commercial area and so it doesn't really become a trail again until you go under the bridge under the highway um and then it gets pretty bad when you get closer to town and it was just chip seals a while back and it's okay i mean the asphalt painting uh paving is also really expensive so i don't know if that would be a priority um it's pretty rough and bumpy Hard to say if that's a priority. Well, thanks for bringing it to my attention. Yeah. I know that uh, we're working with the county on some paving down in the neighborhood of Bill McLean. So that might be worth a conversation with the county while we've got the equipment in the area. So. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's the, the quality. I mean, it's so much better now that they did it properly, kind of in the county. It's, I didn't know if it was the qualities of asphalt um, paving on trails, but it definitely makes a difference. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thanks for bringing that one to my attention as well. What's the status of the HRDC um, Gully Trail? Is that something that, if that easement is done, would need some work? Uh, it sure seems like it could use a little bit of work. Yes. Okay, I don't know what you and Connor have done mm -hmm. a lot of that, right? I mean, yeah, it needs to. So just on the the easement part, so it doesn't. It doesn't really go up into the gut of the Popoc property, which is, I would say, kind of the fun trail stuff. Um, so there needs to be from the road a couple switchbacks to follow a you know 12% grade that's down there. Martha didn't think it was going to be um, as extensive as she expected, so it was pretty easy. Um, and then just walking up there, there's some weed mitigation that can happen, yeah. probably some, um, you know, some delineation between private property and and public property. I don't know if HRDC didn't seem to feel that that was necessary um, when we asked the question. Where is this? It is on the north side. So when you go up into the high grounds area, so like, do you know where Reservoir Park is? Yeah, I'll show you in that. that area. Oh, this is um, I mean, kind of when you go up, if you try to, if you aim for that octagon, house yeah. that's sitting up there on the ridge it kind of aims up there and it's the there's a pretty big gully back behind those repurposed 
homes or big Easter egg colors. The small ones. Pastel. Mm -hmm. Right back. So it's it's that whole gully. Okay. And it's not the whole down. gully. But, huh? Yeah, it comes down. It comes down <laughs> and then it kind of pops out. It's, they have a plot that's also at the end of the gully that goes up, but the rest of it's essentially private um, property. Well, it's all private, but HRDC has. Um, agreed to a easement, a public easement, trail easement back there. Yeah, but I mean that whole net network of trails, unofficial trails, are um, everyone's trespassing back there, yeah. and everyone's going to be sad to see it go someday. But where we get the easements, we should delineate them so that yes, I mean that's how you build trail systems. You get the agreements. Yeah. There could be some, I mean, more signage. It kind of falls into that signage bucket. And there is so much to do with wayfinding and signs. I feel that that would, you could kill the budget, the trails budget. <laughs> Just for those things. I would rather do that than pay, I think, 89 South. Yeah. Yeah. It was my choice. Yeah. And the same question would come up for Summit. If we get a legal yeah. agreement, do we need to? Should we even better delineate that um, as well, or improve um, the Hope of Mountain Trail? You know, yeah, uh, there was some so improvements. We went up there next. It, it's been secured a little bit better. Um, yeah, Hope of Mountain Trail, and then the Bitterroot Trail. Although the developers might be doing something on that. Yeah. I don't want to take that away from them. Like them to improve it. Yeah. Okay. They, they've already kind of. I don't know. The question too is the trees. Yeah. You know, um, but I don't know if there's any. Is there irrigation up there? I don't. Yeah, there, there is. Okay. There was. So yeah, maybe the developer fixed the irrigation last fall. Okay. And we didn't run it all summer because it was in pieces. Okay. And we finally got to it. Uh, we will be turning on. We turned it on once they fixed it. We didn't seem to have any That's great. Because Susan had called about the trees. Right. And that was Susan Regal place. and and Faith said we should put that to the tree board, but there's no reason we couldn't recommend that I don't know how much that developer is putting trees up. I mean a lot Every of those are dead. Uh, yeah. That uh, Northwest uh, Energy put up there or whatever. Um, but that might be an area we do something cooperatively with them. If they're not responsible for everything, it'd be nice to get some trees with a functioning irrigation system up there. Mm -hmm. We got complaints about that too. Lack of trees. There, there's a bunch of dead trees. Yeah. That it wasn't on the developed right. property. It's right. further on. That'd be nice to replace those if there's irrigation. Mm -hmm. They did the. Uh, Put in some nice stone steps from the development up to the trail. Oh, did they? Yeah. I haven't been up there. Yeah, I was uh, walking the dog and uh, we went down those stairs and they were really nice. Oh, good. I'll look at them. Okay. Um, Thank you. Are there other places that have irrigation? Where there could be trees for parks and trails, or would we need to, if we were going to plant more trees in parks or along trails, they would all need irrigation? They would all need, irrigation. yeah, all their trees would need it. Sure, yeah. So it's like that one lonely tree that's in the water plant, you know, by 9th Street. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, that yeah. one tree that Marshall got put in there, yeah, and it's nice. And I keep saying, well, maybe you could add one or two more, but there's no. Uh -huh. Irrigation water. there, right? There is. Oh, there is right there for the water plant park across from that Ninth Street Island and across. So you know where the sister city thing is? Yes. That park there? That has irrigation. Oh, okay. Well, then that would be a nice place. So this one lonely tree, I mean, you know, just yeah. Susan might be interested in that. I don't know if that has to go to the tree board, but I just felt like a little grove might be a little bit nicer than just this one lonely tree there. Mm -hmm. Or reservoir park, there was talk about. Yeah, because they irrigation. could do irrigation there. So but that's a bigger it is. project. Yeah. So should we keep going? Should we keep going? Should we what? Keep going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, you've given me a lot to think about. I do appreciate that. Yeah. Well, trying to focus on what we've already recommended yeah. or discussed. Not yeah. there's not much here that's new. In fact, no, no, no. I don't think any of this is new. But. No. Uh, maybe some of the flood things new from last year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Myers River Beach Trail wasn't exactly on the list of but meetings. That's, but that's it. And uh, I think everything else is like maybe they made a suggestion on it or has been known for a while. Um, and we have a whole list of new things we could build, but uh, don't necessarily need to dive into that for this year's budget. Appreciate it. All right. Any other thoughts, additions? What's the process from here? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the process is that I'm working at a staff level to develop the recommended budget. And at this point, it looks like it will, uh, I'll present it the initial um, time to the city commission the first week of June, which okay. I believe that meeting is perhaps June 6th, if I'm not mistaken. It's a Tuesday. And then uh, I'm not going to ask them to do the first reading. That would occur at the following meeting, so approximately June 20th. And then if they're comfortable, they'll do that reading, and then we would have it approved you know, in early July. Okay. Awesome. Oh, I was just, is there anything that we can do as a committee to advance some of the project priorities and the trails and extra transportation plan? I don't know what our, do we have a role? Um, you know, that's a very good question. I, there's been a few things, a few items in the plan that seem to me like they may be well made for us volunteer, you know, especially when we talk about the trail building, quite mm -hmm. honestly. Okay. Um, and so that's a concept that I'm still kind of working through. I know in some cities that I've lived in or been a part of, you know, there was a pretty active trail maintenance crew that went every spring, you know, right about now when the trail started to dry out and just volunteered and did a little like trail reconstruction work. So um, taking a little bit of the work off Mike and his team. Um, so that's one area that comes to mind, especially, like I said, in kind of some of the unimproved, less improved trail that we have. So okay. that's that's basically something. I did appreciate Clay the question. Though. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Clay, did you have anything else to add to that to this conversation? No, I think I think I'm good. Thank you. Sorry, I have a lot of questions. I was I forgot you were there, Clay, and now um, you reminded me just with the um, no mo May. Um, is that something that we normally get funding from the city from that we have to talk about, or is that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so in the past, we got the first year we got some funding for a few signs, um, and that's really been it. And so I think this year, and I gave away most of those signs last year. And um, as long as people filled out the survey, I allowed them to keep the signs just because it makes the most sense. They were starting to get pretty beaten up. So I, I think this year I'm just going to encourage people to print out the sign that we created. I mean, and I also have two banners that I would like to put up. But, I know this is on the agenda, I think, so we can we could talk about it more. I guess the question I have is, is the city interested in putting more resources into this? Um, and if so, we can figure out what that would be. I think we could probably keep that for the agenda item. Cool. All right, any other budget thoughts, items? Sweet. All right. Uh, and moving on, uh, we have an update from Grant on the Livingston Rotary Club discussion you've had. I also have an update from them on an email I got like a week or two ago from Sarah. So um, yeah, they said they secured $2,500 in funding for adding a, uh, a human and dog water fountain somewhere in town. And I told them I would we'd talk about it at this meeting and figure out next steps and then whatever I don't know, I don't know what kind of bid you have with that uh, on this as well. But that's uh that was the last I heard from Rotary Club. So 
that was the last update I got also. Okay. So I was <laughs> somewhat expecting that um, I talked to the public works director, Shannon, a bit about the reservoir park. And they actually had, I don't know if they shared with you, they had a little bit of a layout, the concept layout that they had done of the park. And so he and I were kind of discussing that. And as you know, there's the donated materials and, and now the water bound. So um, Shannon and I were developing a concept there that we could bring to you folks and then bring up to the, the neighborhood up there to see if that works with them. So at this point, that would be my thought on where to put the water fountain, but... Because um, there's water there, right? Easy to access, right? Yeah, and in fact, actually talking to Shannon, a service line has even been put in and we're... I think, That's what I thought. Yeah, we're pretty well equipped actually to put something in up there with not a ton of lead time is why it's a great idea. I mean, it makes the most sense if you you want, well, it can't be a non-dog friendly park. So we need to have dogs will howl and everywhere is pretty much by the river or by the, um, the Bozeman's connector. Bozeman connector, thank you. That'd be the only other location that I would. But there's no water at Bozeman connector. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and dogs a have a river, so I wouldn't. But what? Dog, and dogs have a river to drink from, so it doesn't make as much sense. That's your park. I think that's nice. That's really good that they're willing to do that. The uh, community I came from just put in a bunch of uh, um, water, um, I guess, features, and um, it had a uh, the dog pan at the bottom that you know like a drinking fountain a drinking fountain and then uh the place you can put your uh, bottle so you could do all three and uh, those were really used a lot i never thought of the bottle thing yeah it's just really hard to fill a bottle on a drinking fountain. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, it is. i agree it's all about the pressure that's a good idea. I like that. Um, cool. So you are, you said you're working with Shannon right now on putting together like a potential park layout. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then come to eventually be here and then public outreach probably mm -hmm. together and put in whatever. And may even use this as the venue for gathering some public input initially as well before you move out to the community. If you folks are amenable to that. Yeah. Works for us. Yes. Um, sweet. So I guess, uh, do you want me to share, like, email Sarah back and say, like, we'll we'll work in the city on it, or do you sure. want to share that? Um, yeah, I, you know, I'm happy to reach out to her. Cool. As a person that does the maintenance in parks, do you think Reservoir Park would be a good location yeah. for a lot of them? I mean, service lines there. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think it'd be fine. Um, I know there's, it seemed like there's a lot of pushback from the residents around there. What's going into that? I don't know the status of everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's the public outreach process we'll pick up on. Uh, okay. Cool. Um, any other items on that? Right. So item number three on the agenda is um, discussing a memorial bench policy recommendation to the city commission. Um, this was apparently on our last meeting agenda that I don't do that. And no, it was requested at the last meeting. Oh, requested put on the last meeting. Great. Got it. Okay. By Bob. Oh, Bob. Oh, is this the item that you said was missing? Uh, well, my item was the. Uh, uh, another bench and uh, uh, poop bags and a uh, trash can at my uh, was it okay. Myers Myers River um, and having the bench facing the crazies and the eagle's nest so facing the other way there's three benches that are facing that little channel um, but you know it's the best view of the crazies, I think, in the city. Um, they're they're really, really nice. And also, <clears throat> you know, there's um, poop bags and and uh, 
trash cans at each end, but it's a mile walk and people drop their poop bags and then don't pick them up. And so that it just seems like a natural, but I haven't had, you know, you would know better. It means staff though then has to go yeah. that yeah. half mile to go empty the trash can. So. Well, you know, you want poop bags sort of around or. <laughs> want people to carry the bag yeah. a half mile. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's social media posts right there. Reminder. I mean, I get what you're saying. I just, I'm just reluctant yeah. to ask staff to empty a trash can. Well, I, I'd settle for a bench. <laughs> <laughs> We've noted the request, and uh, yeah, Mike and I happy to take a look at that. Seems maybe not difficult for us to turn one bench around backwards. Right? I still think oh, oh. that eagle nest is abandoned, though. Ah, uh, yeah. It is. I haven't been there for the last couple of weeks. But... I've been there two or three times a week, and I have not seen the eagle, and it's always back by now. Yeah. And I think it's abandoned that nest. Yeah, I saw an eagle flying around there when we were doing work, and it was winter. Um, right. I didn't see it where it was going. I don't see it nesting. And so that's really Apparently, sad. they've nested the prior six years oh, you know and they could yeah. they can when come we back. did the o street connector trail we had to delay the start of that project remember till august <clears throat> so there was no conflict with the eagle's nest there and so it's just really heartbreaking i don't know why it that that tree branch broke down and they rebuilt it but it's not the same but we can still turn bench <laughs> Yeah, good view of the craze. Craze are still there. Yeah. You know, I looked at the other bench, the one that's really would be right across from it, and it's it's set in cement, and it might be easier just to do a new bench rather than try and turn it. All right. Well, let's uh speaking of benches, let's talk about the bench memorial bench policy recommendation. Uh Bob, is that you requested who, who requested that? I wasn't a class Well, I, I think it, this came up, Bob, because you were, we said we don't know what the policy is yeah. about where benches go. And, you know, some trails are getting tons of benches and others aren't getting any. And your suggestion, for example, to turn it around. So I didn't know what, if you, if you wanted to suggest a policy or what? Uh, there was an attachment in the agenda right. for like the application, the application and then like the general requirements for the bench, memorial bench program. Do we need more than that? Well, yeah, I think the thing on benches I said is that every place I go, there are different kinds of benches, and, and some of them are pretty nice, and some of them. Are falling apart, and um, some are going to require much more maintenance, and just maybe to come up with a couple of standard benches that are really durable and don't require a lot of repair. I, you know, I would offer we have the same situation going on with our bike racks in town. If you walk down Main Street, I think there's five different styles of bike racks on Main Street alone, and so. Um, as part of the downtown master plan um, that is process that is ongoing or soon to go on to get underway, um, they are tasked with coming out with a furniture plan. Um, and so that hopefully will lead us to a uniform design on benches and bike racks and things like that. So hopefully we can at least start to take care of a little bit of the variation in design. But that said, we've got a lot of benches within the city. And so it's going to be a, a long time before, you know, they're harmonious looking at all the same design, just the expense of, of a park bench. And when I look at the band shell in that area, there's quite a few benches just in that one area. And then going yeah, into the other areas, there's there's a number of different designs and, and a lot of inventory of things. So it is something that we're 
like the signage we're just kind of starting to work on. So who's doing the furniture plan? So that will be part of the downtown master plan. Okay. But it can extend beyond the downtown. So that there's a, um, yes, okay. exactly. It, it will, part of that will come up with different equipment, both benches and um, bike racks and gotcha. other kind of street furniture that then will roll out from there. Although, yeah, we've, we've just got a number of different designs, I think, okay. from the history of the town. I like that outdoor furniture, bike racks. That'll be good to standardize. Um, cool. So, are we any other notes on well, I just, um, you know, the cost of $800, I'm sure that by the time you buy a bench and you put it in the labor, that, you know, it's $800. Um, that's a pretty good chunk of dough. And it or less would would there be uh, more benches? You know, would, is that eight hundred dollars stopping people from buying a bench? Doesn't seem to. I mean, no, I I think I think there's been a lot of benches going on the terms. I'd say that's a good number. But I also would say like eight hundred dollars doesn't go as far as we would like it to either. Sure. At the same time, right? So you're using cement I mean, now like, for all of them, aren't you? It's yeah. Our standard right now is the four by four by eight. Yeah. Flat. So actually, turning that bench might not be hard if you just have to unbolt it and turn it. Yeah. It, it depends on which one it is. It's some were uh, set with like a sonar tube oh. on the ground. It, it's a slab. It is a slab. But I'm not sure if you just turn the bench rather than moving it right. across a trail, whether you're, you're going to get the view. Yeah, yeah. We'll check it out. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, I actually, to be honest with you, when I saw the $800 of the bench, it seemed very late to Low. me. Yeah, yeah, I was um, like, that's got to be like 1200 bucks now. Yeah, now in, in the last city I went to, I can tell you, we charged about 2500 for a bench because it was not only the cost of the bench and the installation, but then we would also put on some for maintenance right. and upkeep over the next 15 years that the bench was in place. So mm -hmm. 800 seems like a steal to me on a memorial bench. I, mean, I think for our community and our purposes, it'd be really nice to have, you know, more of a location policy and you know, where benches are going and maybe a methodology around where they go. Yeah, we have a high concentration right near the band shell. Yeah. Right. And every time we're up there, people are like, oh, another bench. Like, we're just going to bleach the whole thing at some point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's the policy we might want to look at. Yeah. Still running, just a running yeah. room benches yeah. like it, you know. Diversifying where they go, and maybe there's other options if something doesn't take as much maintenance. Um, memorial committees. That new road is going in um, to the end of Myers and two parking spots. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, that's a great place to put a bench <laughs> overlooking the river and and it's really beautiful. So that would be my suggestion. At the end of Alpenglow, you're thinking? Yeah. Oh. That's right. I mean, you could include some recommended sites, I guess, or places that don't have benches yet. To, to your point about um, certain places already having a lot to yeah. help direct folks, because they might just think of that spot because everybody goes there and that's top of mind. But that's my experience is well, people when they get into memorial benches think about oh where did you know so and so like to sit oftentimes right. everyone yeah. likes to sit in the same area right <laughs> either at depot park or looking at the river and so it's in my experience not always the easiest conversation to guide somebody to an area that's maybe a little bit less well utilized or mm -hmm. furnished in the city memorial but, park signs memorial what i said park signs like to fund our sign program yeah. Are we finding? I mean, I'm not being totally serious. <laughs> like the dog, the dog memorial uh, breaks and things like that. 
Yeah, the dog memorial. That actually does that work well? I, I well, mean, the I one at the Bozeman. dog park in Bozeman, they're they're just little pictures of the dog. Yeah, little squares, and they could put three or four or five on one post, and you got two or three sides they'll put those on. Yeah, so you could get a lot of money in donations for these signs that have the picture and the name, and it doesn't take up a lot of space. And that's that's the thing I I'd hate to see. Parks and trails start getting cluttered with all kinds of stuff. I mean, that gets away a little bit from the culture. Yeah, no, it does. Of some of these areas. That, I mean, we have that, looks like a cemetery bench at Mayor's Landing for Margie. Yeah. You know, um, so that, which is another part of the policy is what's appropriate styles. And that's something I'm sure the furniture plan up with, but what is a cemetery bench? Yeah, it looks like something you'd like, see in like a cemetery. It's a granite stone, granite slab, style bench. Yeah, it's the, probably the most expensive bench. Yeah, it's a oh, sure, in our inventory. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Very, very large, very yeah. little maintenance, though. Yeah. Yeah. It's got a nice <laughs> saying on it, but it's just what's our policy, you know, right? Yeah. That's all. Yeah, I feel like there we should just have no policy. No, no customization. You just get a bench. Okay. So any proposals for changes here? Or are we just like are we are we pretty good with what we have? You know? I think if there's a furniture plan being developed, there's no need for us to start something. My opinion too. So. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'd like to see if they come up with yeah, definitely. Can we put a like a moratorium on new benches until that plan is developed. We recommend that. Do you have very many um, applications right now outstanding for benches? No, okay. Yeah. yeah, I'm not sure we need to preemptively <laughs> ban <laughs> benches. I just wanted to use or suggest a ban. <laughs> yeah. yeah, good use of the word moratorium. <laughs> It feels a bit, you know, over heavy handed, if, if I may, as city manager. But Mike and I will chat about it more until later. <laughs> a suspension. Uh, uh, all right. Cool. All right. Thank you, everybody. Uh, and that's it's great to know it's already on the city's radar. It's fantastic. So, uh, all right. We're going to pass it to Digital Clay Bolt over here um, to talk about No Mo Mac. Everybody, um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm really excited that we're in our third year for Nemo May. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to um, recommend that we, unless the city wants to invest in more signs, that we just stick to the digital signs that people can download. It seems like for a lot of people, the word is out. Um, I'd still like to put up banners, um, as I've done in the past couple of years, um, try to put one at the library as well as on the corner of um, 89 South and um, what is that? I'm trying to remember. Right, right, right near Mark's in and out on the corner there as you come off the highway. Um, but in addition to that, I was curious um, where the city plan. If the city plans to do any nemo spaces in public spaces like they've done in the you've done in the past. Um, yeah, and I guess we'll just start there. Um, excellent question. So it sounds like <laughs> the initial list for this year, and I do welcome. Um, the committee's input, but it sounds like Public Works is planning on Mars Park, Mayor's Landing, the Roping Arena, the library with their permission, Myers River Trail, and Reservoir Park as Nomo May locations. Oh, wonderful. Let me let me repeat those back to you. So Mayor's Landing, Roping Arena, Myers River View, Mars Park, and what was the, there was one other one. A uh, Reservoir Park. Reservoir, great. Okay, great. I'd like to write a press release <clears throat> like we've done in the past. That way people know where to download the sign. So um, I don't know who would like to review that, Gene, you've done it in the past, but I don't know if somebody else would like to review the press release. You have a good model. I mean, yeah. Last year's. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and actually, Clay, if you would, if you wouldn't mind copying me on that, I was, I've got a newsletter that's going out on Friday, and sure, just include a note in there, and then, you know, I would invite all members of the committee. Um, I'm intending that the 
the city commission will do a no mo may proclamation this year and mm -hmm. read that so if anyone would like to attend the meeting tuesday at 5 30 this tuesday yeah that will be one of the earlier items on the agenda cool yeah, earlier oh. items. I, I will be in um dc but i think i should be able to jump on so thank you that's so so exciting thank you grant yeah um great and so uh, yeah i'll make sure i include you on that i've got that model um yeah, that's that's all I have right now. I guess other than the recommendation on the signs, if I don't I don't know if there's any um, conversation around that. If you guys are okay with the printable signs, if that serves the purpose, um, printable signs are fine by me. My yard will have one of the uh, the lingering old signs that has been in my garage for a year. <laughs> Change now at this point, so. Um, but yeah, I mean I. I'm good at printed signs unless we want to have more. What was the demand of signs? Did you have an over subscription? To yeah, definitely. There was more requests than than I had signs for. Um, I think we did fifty the first time around. I have a few, but they're again they're pretty they're pretty rough. The one at Mars Park last year. Um, I think somebody may have run over it with a car or a lawnmower or something. I'm not sure. <laughs> it's not looking great. So um, I do have enough that I can put on some, I, I think I have enough that I can post signage on all of the locations, the official locations, but that might be something at the very least that we'd want to consider, um, if not for this year, for next year to purchase some signs that the city can put out for the official locations. Oh, yeah. Does the city have not, no, any signs? No, I don't think so. Clay, do you have any information about um, how many more communities are doing this since we started this two years ago? Well, nationwide, um, I don't have an exact figure, but nationwide, it's becoming a, a trend. Um, I think we're still the only, to the best of my knowledge, I think we're the only um, city in Montana that's doing it, which is sad, but also I'm glad that we're still leading the way on that. Um, and, you know, I know that we're going to talk a little bit about BC to USA. Um, we're still, we would be the second city in the state to get that as well. So lots of room for inspiration here in Montana. Are you going to do the survey again this year? Um, to ask people to sign up or just have it wide open and they can just download the sign and I kind of think, honestly, like I feel like just if the city is behind it and there's a proclamation and we, you know, make sure that there's, you know, enough signage around town that, you know, I wouldn't mind sending out a survey that maybe would maybe we can do something like a. I don't know. I don't know how we'd get it out, honestly, but I, I was really not planning to do a survey this year just because okay. I okay. It seems like people are kind of getting on board with it. And if they're not, they're not, you know, so. Okay. Has the city or the uh, parks and trails ever done anything uh, for just informational for wild bees? Um, yeah, so that's but this is primarily for wild bees, and I've done uh, presentations in previous years. I was going to offer to do a native bee talk grant if you would like me to do that at a public meeting or any, you know, I could do a short presentation, which I've done in the past. Um, but I primarily focus on wild native bees, um, particularly because, as I mentioned to several of you, we have a, a few rare species, including one that's proposed for listing on the Endangered Species Act here in town. So, In the past, has that included, uh, you know, the little nesting boxes or, you know, th things like that? You know, what can we do as citizens? Um, <clears throat> no, it does not include the nesting box. I mean, the, the 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 idea behind this is that it's a really simple thing that people can do uh, to feed um, early spring bees. Uh, most of them are solitary, but we also have queen bumblebees flying around that time of year, typically. Um, and so it's just a really easy way that people can help feed the bees and give them food that has been displaced by development over the years. Um, but I love the idea of doing more things, but no mow may no specifically has been more about education and just sort of giving people a reason not to mow their lawn for a few weeks. 
or however long they can stand it. I'm glad you added that. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I, I would just add somewhat related to no mo May, and it probably would be something <clears throat> for next year. The city commission had has had some conversation about doing <clears throat> a study related to um, native plantings and um, some other demonstration projects in on our property. And um, you know, in my experience, I've been a part of some pollinator projects that. Um, included actually like a pollinator garden or even like a chain of pollinator gardens, you know, across the city. And so I think that's probably something that we'll evaluate a little bit in line with Bob's comments over the next year oh, cool. to see if, you know, next year for the, the, the season in no more May, if we don't have a, a more robust opportunity to talk about pollinators and raise awareness there. Nice. That'd be amazing, Grant. And if you need somebody on that committee or whatever, I'd be happy to volunteer for that. And just let me know. Awesome. I appreciate that, Clay. Yep, sure. Um, I should pull up the agenda, but do we have, is, is B-City USA next on the agenda? Uh, no, not next. It's okay. Okay, sure. Uh, cool. Any other no more? May. Cool. Thank you, Clay. Appreciate that. Uh, we'll be calling on you soon for our supporting updates. Um, community garden discussion would be our next item. Um, this was added to the agenda by myself, I believe. Um, there was a paper article written about the commission discussing uh, the possibility of adding community gardens to spaces around town. Um, a former Parks and Trails community member who happens to love farming and gardening emailed me about that and said that, you know, there's support there. So I figured we could chat about that and kind of hear, I'd love to hear a little bit more about like what the discussion is and then if there's any ways the committee can support those efforts in the, uh, under our purview of Parks and Trails and open spaces that could possibly host something in the community garden. Mm -hmm. So um, actually that the community garden was came that proposal that came to us for budget time was to study urban gardening and opportunities there both on public and private land and that was the same the same conversation where the commission said yes sounds like a great idea but i think we can do more to include you know a study on, on native plantings and and the pollinator aspect as well and so that is that is all part of that kind of larger review that, that the commission has asked for and so Yes, that's the goal, and I, I believe that the the intent is to to do the study in the the fall and winter to help inform some of our work in the spring and summer. Thanks, Okay. So I would say, as far as um, things that that this committee could do to help, it's most likely we will go out with an RFP and bring. Um, a consultant of some measure on to do that. And then I would imagine there'd be a public engagement process. And this seems like one of the better venues to manage that process through if, if the board is amenable to that. Cool. So this the study would be to the point of like bringing a consultant in. And that's, doing the that's what process. was, you know, kind of the idea that was presented to us. And really all five of the commissioners seemed pretty in favor of it. So... Um, yeah, more than likely that makes it the budget. It's exciting. Wonderful news. I shared with Connor and maybe a couple of folks uh, a grant that, unfortunately, the deadline's coming up really soon, but it's a $6,000 grant to hire a consultant to do a study for um, a design project. And so I was thinking that would be a perfect fit for trying to do, a, um, whether it's like a wildflower garden, at, I was thinking Myers Riverview, but I wonder if it would be a applicable to what you're talking about, Grant? It sure sounds like it could. If uh, if you wouldn't mind sending me the grant information, I can have uh, someone on the team take a look at it. Okay, great. Yeah, I mean, I think the deadline's like a week from now, so I just found out about it, but I'll send it, I'll send it your way. Great, thank you. How many community gardens are there now? Any idea? Community There's a one at your building. 
There, well, it was uh, the front yard was split. So farm to school has half, and then the other half was run by the food resource center. And then they didn't provide water though. So I think that was a bit of a challenge. And then there wasn't a lot of program support for it. So it needed it needed some more hands-on inputs. And then so farm to school is going to expand and take over that whole space. Um, I don't know. All the community gardens that I know of are run by farm to school at schools. And then um, Kathy Papert's in as a memorial to Mark Papert passing away. He had a really massive garden and greenhouse. And so they've allocated half of that garden also to farm to school. But it's all within their organization that I know of. I don't know if Permaculture Institute is doing any community garden stuff or if that's primarily their organization too. They might do some workshops and we are doing the garden, the, the native plant garden around the Sacagawea statue. Mm -hmm. So the, we have a contract using some of the funds from the statue that we did 20 years ago. And we hired Heather. She did a lot of the work last fall and so we're putting in native plants there around that statue, which was supposed to be plants from around when Lewis and Clark came to Lewis. So that's a community garden source, I guess. The library, I thought they were going to rip up their grass and put in native species and pollinators. That's what I heard too. Yeah, I don't know where they are in their process. They might be worth reaching out to your partner or it could be part of the pollinator greenway. I don't know what it is. What's it called? I like that. B-way. What's it called? I just said B-way. 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 Indeed, it has something. It's not, yeah. <laughs> I'm not in my peak marketing skills at the moment, but I'll keep thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Um, something that came up interesting, just thinking, is we were at the stakeholder meeting for the Yellowstone Gateway Museum um, kind of public process, and they were talking about what's unique about Park County and some of the exhibitions and the story they're going to tell. And I was thinking about you play, um, just of having endangered bees and you know all the bumblebees, and so I just want to put a plug for you to reach out to them to tell that story um, because. Insects weren't very well represented. In the I'd, I'd love to do that. Remind me, say that again. Who that was? The Yellowstone Gateway Museum. So it's a park oh, county. Yeah. Yep. Yes, I will reach out to them. How many native bees are in Montana? Well, the number, the number is rising. I mean, honestly, like a lot of the state hasn't been surveyed, but I think a, a conservative estimate is probably six hundred species. Um, you know, which is which is pretty good. And we have more species of bumblebee than any other state in the country. Um, we've got some really rare ones, especially in the mountains. So pretty bee rich place. Yeah, we love cute ones. Yeah, all the best ones in Montana. Uh, cool, well, any other community garden? And it sounds like an exciting frontier. Of, uh, of improvements and uh, additions to the city. So, awesome. Let us, uh, I guess we'll stay in touch on how we can help once the RFPs out and the consultants are gone. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So, we'll jump to old business now. Uh, Clay, we will collect a few adopt a trail updates from you. Okay. So, I sent out um, a request, I followed up and sent another request out for. Um, confirmation who's going to be participating um, in in uh, adopt a trail right now I've gotten a couple of responses um, Jessica Wilcox wrote and said that uh, Livingston Healthcare is going to continue or participate continue their participation um, and they're going to stay on um, for Alpenglow as well as Myers Riverview they're going to have a, um, a cleanup day very soon um, the last one was canceled um, due to weather and she just reminded that she was hoping that they were hoping to pave Alpenglow by the end of May uh, to build equitable access to trails allowing for ADA compliant connections to the O Street connector, um, which is great. 
And then Sarah also wrote back and said that uh, PCEC is still involved uh, for high, Highway 89 South bike path and that the Livingston Bike Club is happy to take on the O Street connector. Um, and Livingston Bike Club is conducting their spring cleanup on May 21st, and we'll do another in the fall. PCEC has also done one in spring. So those are the only people I've heard from so far. If I don't hear back again in a, in a, in a week or so, I'll, I'll send another message to those who haven't responded. Okay, we have, what was it, eight groups currently, or there were eight last year that you're seven, seven. <coughs> yeah, okay. so to jumping things a little bit, I, it's, so Sarah, if you, for for social media, I, maybe maybe you, you could either do Livingston Bike Club. I, I would actually look to maybe Jean because she's been involved longer, but the, I know that the bike club has been super involved um, with cleanups in the past. But you got a choice of PCEC, the bike club, or the folks at the hospital to feature in social media for Adopt a Trail. Okay, cool. Sounds good. Any Adopt a Trail questions? Great. Well, I think that moves us nicely into the Alpha Glow paving update. Sounds Actually, like sorry, Connor. Sorry. One last thing. So yeah. when Grant and I met um, a few weeks ago, we talked about creating essentially temporary signs that may not have the city branding. Um, but Grant, um, I don't know if you're still moving forward on just considering maybe having your guys create some signs in the meantime uh, for for volunteers. Um, yeah, I I, uh, I I think I owe you and I need a follow up conversation to um, just work out some details on that one. Okay, sounds great. All right. Any other items on that from you, Clay? No. Awesome. So then we can get Alvin Glow paving. Um, I don't know who is that, Eugene. No, Bob had raised the question at our last meeting about the concern about whether it needed to be asphalt or whether they could use um, smaller gravel. So he was going to talk to Jesse. So I don't know what. Sounds like. Yeah, and I, I didn't. And then um, Sarah talked about that, you know, it's, it's basically a done deal. They've got the money, they've got. Oh, they, they actually got the funding? Yep, I, they got most of it. I don't know if they've secured everything. If, if they're trying to get it done by end of May. Sounds like, I'm not, I'm not in touch with it directly. I could be, if it would be helpful. Well, do you know anything about that? Because the paved Alpenglow, it goes partly on city property from the ditch, the bridge over to the parking lot. The bridge over to the parking lot. And uh, it is happening. I know that. I think it's a big um, I'm just seeing a few emails recently. That it is being paid. Yes. And the two parking spots, do you think? Oh, okay. And a, and a walkway to the vault building. Oh, good. A walkway to where? The vault building. Where is the vault building? So right under the, the gate, side of the fence. Straight ahead. Okay. There's a Lewis and Clark sign there, mm -hmm. and then the gate, and then the vault's right on the other side of the fence. Not quite. Okay. All right. So okay. the path will cross the driveway to connect to the street. Today. Oh, so that's to all be paid. Oh, well, that makes total sense. Nice. Of course. Now here we go. Formal sidewalks all the way from where O Street ends to the city <laughs> and town. Oh boy, there's a fight. Uh, yeah. Just like the, maybe you know the maintenance, but I know if I'm not mistaken. So, uh, like any gravel clearing off the bridge is county? Is that right? Streets, usually the county. Cities. Okay. And then they do all the way the O Street connector, all the way RX. Okay, and will they do the parking lot to the bridge into Alpine Glow, or is that called in on the piece of that? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Might be my crew for it. I'm not sure. Yeah. I think they were negotiating with the 
with the hospital, you, weren't you? Or? Yes. So the hospital has a grant to do up to the bridge in the city from the bridge to O Street. Oh, the city is paying for that? Well, I don't know. I don't know all the finance. Oh, okay. Of it, okay. Yeah. But okay. I know the city's handling that part. Right, right. Okay. I know they, after two did one doing it all, and then another okay. bid just for the hospital center. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Okay. Great. Well, uh, back to you, Mr. Clay, for a B City USA discussion. So you guys know that um, I've been talking about this since I joined the board, um, and I'm really excited that um, I had a conversation. A lot of things happened in this conversation with Grant. We had a lot of discussions. This is one of the topics that we discussed, and uh, I was really happy to hear that Grant was on board with us figuring out a way to move forward. And, and Grant, I received a notification from the folks at B City that there has been an application put in for the city or it's in progress. Um, so I don't know if that's somebody on your staff or another person, but um, uh, either way, it's uh, it sounds like, um, basically it sounds like that we've got a lot of the pieces in place already, especially considering the things that Grant mentioned earlier in terms of a community survey for um, native plants and a pollinator effort around um, city properties, as well as a proclamation for Nomo May. Um, we have a lot of the pieces again in place um, for applying for Nomo May, I'm sorry, for uh, B City USA um, approval. Um, and Grant said that they'd be willing to pay the fee, which is only like $100 a year. Um, and then it'll give us a sign that, so that we can, you know, designate the where BCD USA when you come in. But what I'm really excited about is this is number one, a proclamation that we can we can share out widely in the state to say that we're, you know, supporting pollinators. Um, it also, I think, will allow us to make a case for getting more funding for pollinator uh, support here in the city. It's just a nice indication that the city um, is, is in support of that. Um, the only other piece that I think that I see that we need to do right now is to create a subcommittee, um, um, which would include someone from the city as well as I certainly would be on it and um, anyone else who would like to be a part of it from this committee or, or otherwise just to discuss B City USA um, business. I don't think it has to be incredibly formal. Um, but yeah, Grant, did you have anything to add to that? Um, you know, the only thing I would add that, yeah, we we have reached out to the B City USA folks and received a copy of the application. We have not submitted it. I wanted to give you folks the opportunity to let us know if that was something that was interesting to you. It is a recognized strategy in the growth policy um, or an enumerated strategy in the growth policy. So um, it certainly fits with, with what we're doing and if you folks were okay with it or supportive of the application uh, I would move it up to the city commission for the next step for their approval and yeah my recollection Clay when I looked through the application it's pretty much all stuff that we're already doing now mm -hmm. and so it, it seemed like it was as much to fill out the application and send the check and we'd probably be there. Yeah, I think so. And you know, I gave you the sample of the uh, the uh, the plan that Red Lodge had put together. I'm happy to to work with you on making that fit for Livingston, unless you want to do it. But otherwise, I'm I'd volunteer to help you get that started. I will never turn down help, Clay. So okay, thanks. glad to do it. Do you need a motion or just an indication that we're supportive? Yeah, I, I think a motion would be. Clay, do you want to make the motion? Heck yeah, I do. I'd like to make a motion that um, the Parks and Trails Committee adopt the city's recommendation to apply for BCDUSA status. Second. Okay. Uh, Sarah. Uh, all right. I have a question. Just, I assume BCDUSA is a, a a national organization promoting bees. Okay. It's it's an organization that's run in partnership with the Xerces Society for Invertebrate Conservation, which is based out of Portland, Maine. Uh, it is uh, recognized throughout the country. There's also a B Campus USA program, um, which is MSU actually has that designation. 
Um, but yeah, it's just a it's just a great it's sort of like the backyard habitat program that National Wildlife Federation promotes, but for bees. All for twice measure. Yay. All twice. <laughs> All right. You got it, Clay. We are All right, I'm resigning. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> he has reached the peak. Uh, <laughs> All right. Cool. Well, that's uh, exciting. Thanks for the support. <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm excited to see us become a city. Um, <laughs> All right, I can hear it in your voice. <laughs> Thrill me. Um, any final comments on bees? All right, so we'll move to map printing updates. Uh, that'll be either Gene or Grant, I suppose. Grant, it'll be great. Mm -hmm. You know, unfortunately, on my computer here, I have a copy <laughs> of a proof on a PDF that looks great, and I just can't. I don't have any way to access it because it's actually on the network, not on the computer. It so, wasn't. It's not, it's not that, right? No, no. I and I, I. Let's see. I struggle to think. So there was actually one decision point here, um, which was so we incorporated the the changes that that you folks discussed at the last meeting, and uh, revised the map to show green acres in the city. Um, and call that out. But there was a, a decision point related to the picture. And oh, so there are basically three options for the picture that I um, um, So one is a picture of some slightly snow covered mountains there, the field space. Does it show a trailer park? It does. That one does not, which is why I didn't love it. And so the other two, I'm happy to, to send this around because there are two other um, parks and some on trail. The latest. Nice. So I'm happy to, to walk it around. These are the two that, that show people. Yeah. Parks. That's great. Yeah. Make the people ones. <laughs> so meanwhile what did you do on the historic or cultural thing did you decide to add that so we um uh, we took a look at that and, oh, I like those. Um, and it seemed like a a, a little bit of a heavy lift that okay. actually showed you an inventory and effort. Yep. And so our our thought internally was to um, try to incorporate those more in the next iteration. Okay. And so this one we updated the parks um, and some of the amenity information for some of the parks, and then we updated the map and. Um, and the cover photograph, for, as you suggested, have a different iteration. Okay, and then you you've changed the phone number for Fish, Wildlife, and Parks. I believe so, but I will confirm that. Yep. And then um, the spelling for Jack Renner, that was misspelled. Okay, I believe we did get that one, the okay. Jack Wyatt one. And um, then um, I will take a note of that. we have Northside Soccer Park. It's a small issue, but it's actually Northside Park. We did remove soccer because from that. Okay. I did get that okay. suggestion as well. Yep. And then um, Moja, I don't know what you did on Moja Park. It's Moja Campbell Dog Park, I think is what Faith, mm -hmm. she included the resolution. Mm -hmm. So it's up to you whether you change that. What did you decide to do about dedicated private parkland? You had mentioned Northtown, but I didn't know if there were other, other dedicated private park sites you wanted to include. Mm -hmm. That was another one of those where we decided that it was worth us taking some time and really looking okay. at all the different subdivisions okay. and locating out where all of those dedicated open spaces are. Okay. And then did the county do any changes on the county side? The only, Aside from taking out Green Acres? They took out Green Acres and then I think we updated some parking amenities at a couple of times. Okay. okay, so they participated in all that. Good. Great. Are you going to have to go to um, um, 
get a graphic artist to do some work like we did last time. So actually, that was the proof that I had hoped to show you. You'd already actually, gone. So yeah, all the, the update is done. And really, it was kind of those two pictures that I showed you. And then the third one that didn't have any people at Parks or Trails in it. I like so, the fall picture better, I think. Because right, it shows more use. More, more likely the time of use than the skiing, probably. Yeah, skiing, probably not the most uh, common thing people are doing. Yeah. Parks and Trails. That was kind of my inclination was to go with the one that was the people walking and not the people skiing. So yeah. if everyone is amenable with that decision, I'm yeah. happy to pass that on. Yeah. And then I think that is it that I had for questions because we went over a bunch of this stuff, I think. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and yeah, and I did get your follow-up email from maybe two weeks ago or three weeks ago. And, and the one I had sent to Faith. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I we really, and we yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah, so I think we made a few improvements to the map, made it a little more accurate this year. And then you'll um I don't I don't know what you're deciding for the numbers of copies or what kinds. I sent Faith the, the last bid mm -hmm. that we've gotten from Printing for Less, but it's like the city's decision whether you want to do all the waterproof or the other ones or a mix or whatever. Right? Yeah, I, I do welcome the, the committee's input on on that. If you folks, you know, have a, a strong feeling about the waterproof maps, or you think that the non-waterproof are fine. I've never heard any feedback on one than the other. I, the, I think the one I heard was from folks at Timber Trails that hand them out, like hundreds of these, mm -hmm. that people like the waterproof ones better because mm -hmm. if they're out walking and in bad weather or whatever it's nice. So is these are diesel? these are the waterproof, but these which uh, which you can see are smaller are not. So they aren't as good in weather. I mean, so it's totally up to you. I last time we got I think four thousand of these because there's some they are more expensive and two thousand of these. Are they double more expensive? They are so for example for two thousand of the um not waterproof it was a thousand twenty one. Two thousand of the others were twenty five hundred. So a little more than double. Yeah. Did you hand all of them out? This is I'm giving I'm asking Grant if he wanted these. I have like I have like seventy five left. I figured I'd get those to Timber Trails. They call every so often. Yeah. And so does the outdoor shop at um, Chico. Because I don't think the county's really doing anything with the ones they have. So I give them to Chico. Um, the chamber has taken some. They haven't asked any for a while. Because they reprinted this map in the, the little booklet they put out every year, every summer. Mm -hmm. They've started printing this. So they haven't used them. And um, the Murray has used them. Sage, um, you know, I dropped some off up there, but they've never called for more. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just focus focusing more on the city. The hospital has them. They've asked for extras. Um, the schools, I don't think, are really using much. So, so I don't know what to suggest as far as waterproof or what. Um, we got so much money from. What was it just over 5,000, mm -hmm. I think. So it's, I don't know how much you had to pay for the graphic artist and the rest goes for the printing. So it's, I guess I'll, I think the more waterproof we can do, the better. Okay. But I'll leave it up to you to figure out. What do you guys think? Because Livingston Bike Club took a bunch. We did, and we, we had them at events. But didn't really get the feedback then. No. People are generally doing like trail maintenance and they're kind of there to work. Right. And some people would take them away. But, um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's hard when they're not specified what their bike the material is. And... That might be something we do for another iteration. Yeah. I don't know how you decide that, but. Yeah. I'm sure you guys could. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, um, I mean, 
We didn't add HRDC, right? Or what are you doing about Summit? Or is it staying on there? Um, <clears throat> so up there, we've got Reservoir Park. We've got the high, the high ground public use. And And then north side, those are the only things that come near summit. So summit was number eight. Mm, yes, that is still on there. Okay. Summit trail. Yeah, that's on there. And then we'll just have to wait on HRDC for that's actually done. I think so, yeah. This, mm. What about changing a designation for Alpen Glow if it's going to be paved? Well, that was the other thing. We talked about whether we wanted to indicate whether it was accessible, add that logo or that icon. And that was one thing that we did discuss internally. And um, it seemed like that was going to be a little bit difficult for us oh, to okay. incorporate at this time. Okay. okay. Yeah. So maybe bicycle and and um, accessible would be something for a future map. Mm -hmm. okay. I'll make them that. Sorry, I got one of these for you, but I didn't know if you got any. Oh, yeah, but I'll take one of this. Any other map comments? Some distribution. The chamber was that the place that people took them out? We had, yeah, but they haven't. I called Leslie or emailed her and asked if she wanted in more last fall or summer and hadn't heard from her. But I do think they're relying on that visitor guide, yeah, more than just handing these out. Yeah. So, yeah. but I know some of the businesses. That work through them, we're getting some of them from them. So they would still, I'm sure, would still take some in the future. I also have given some to a couple of the vets for the dog, so they get um, dog areas. I was looking. Physical therapist that you told me she uses it yeah. to show where people can go do rehabilitation, walking. Yeah. And especially there's a plug for the benches. Is it when they have short benches and they have high high right. rehabilitation needs? Going from bench to bench. And so she does programs using our trail map. Exclusively walking along the levee trail. Every 20 <laughs> feet there's a bench. Yeah. Right. So Grant, if you want help with the distribution, I'm happy to do I I've got the list of what we did last time and Happy to help with that again. I'll absolutely take you up on that. Good. All right. This is cool. It's going to be exciting to see it in its full version whenever your computer decides to <laughs> connect to the internet again. <laughs> All right. So item number five on the old updates would be, or I guess uh, old business, would be Park Street Crossing updates. Um, I know I had a calendar invite to a thing about the TCC meeting, I think, for that engine, but I yep. would love to hear an update on how, how that's progressing. <clears throat> and Mark, few those leaders gone, so it's up to you. Yeah, yeah. So we had intended to do some um, crossing upgrades through a transportation alternatives grant application. And then as we dug into that, in order to do um, rapid flashing beacons on a TA grant, we need to have um, both traffic and pedestrian counts for the locations in question. Mm -hmm. And so we had intended actually to just utilize the crossing locations that were identified in the um, active transportation plan, but we unfortunately didn't have traffic counts or pedestrian counts for any of those locations. And so we were unable to submit the application for it for that. However, there is a new um, federal grant program that's through the um, Secretary of the Department of Transportation's office 
called Safe Streets for All that just opened up and it was a large chunk of money. So we are actually putting together a, um, a, uh, a proposal for that program. We also did have a conversation with um, MDT in the TCC meeting today. And I guess I just suffice it to say there are a lot of new staff members over at the MDT side of the house. And, um, you know, we made it clear to them that we think there's an issue with park crossing Park Street and that it's something that's worth taking a look at. And so they indicated they were uh, going to go out. And if I'm not mistaken, um, we'll meet again in a month and they will have done some review on that one. And I'm actually, now that I'm thinking about that, I did just have a conversation with someone else from MDT related to them placing traffic counters in town. Mm -hmm. And so I just put two and two together right here while I was talking that I think that MDT has multiple things going on that would help us in this project. Mm -hmm. Um, Great. And also be useful to the potential state streets for all um, application. Are they looking also at Bennett Street or is it just in town? So we had only at this point, um, we had been talking to them about Park Street because um, Park is an urban route. And so they have some jurisdiction over it. Um, but uh, we are certainly aware of the Bennett Street um, opportunities, I'll say that. Oh. Well, that's cool. One door closes, another one opens. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't have thought that would happen, but uh, that's great. It, I, I will tell you that it is a very high priority for me enhancing the safety of the mm -hmm. Park Street crossings. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, there's a lot we can do there. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Then I, my wife and I were, well, she went to the uh, museum meeting, and uh, we live on the north side. And, so came down fifth and the trains, one was parked and the other was going through. And so then we went down to, to the underpass <clears throat> and it was backed up four blocks because of the signal. And uh, <laughs> my wife said, boy, this is first time I've, I've uh, done rush hour, <laughs> you know? <laughs> someday yeah. it's working out yeah i was gonna say please know that's a very high priority of mine also that um and and i think we will know in the next 60 days if we are successful in that uh, raise grant application that we put in um but i can assure you we've already identified several other means to accomplish that alternatives analysis for possible grade separated crossing so that is that is a very very high priority of mine Love it. Uh, all right. Any other Park Street crossing questions? Thoughts? All right. Moving along, we've got National Trails Day planning. It's on June third. Um, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hey, okay, thanks, Mike. Uh, did you? Was that your? I just put it. I asked to put this on in case we wanted to do anything. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have a lot of time, but if we wanted to just promote it our trails or something um, since it's coming up. We haven't done a cleanup, a citywide cleanup in a long time because we have the adopted trail teams doing it on their own schedules. Um, so. That is Saturday. Yes. It's usually the first Saturday in June. So it might just be an opportunity to promote um, trails and, you know, nice behavior on trails like cleaning up after your dog or whatever. Your dog's on leash, of course. Oh, goodness. It's the ones that are unleashed that come over to it. I mean, I like the idea of partnering maybe even with our adopted trail folks and promoting that day, the spring cleanup, that all of them don't do it on that day. And maybe we can generate a little bit of hype um, 
I've got, you know, the AmeriCorps team, which is eight people that are working with Mike to do trainings and part cleanups. Um, so we could have eight bodies that are doing and helping with cleanups. So I don't know if the maps are going to be printed. I don't know. We could do a little bit, bit of a morning, you know, spend one or two hours doing community service at PCC and maybe learn some bike club and some others might be interested. I think that's a great idea, Sarah. I think it'd be really cool to do that. Um, maybe we can connect um, on the side and, and discuss how we sort of structure that in terms of sending it out, if that sounds good to you. I have to go out pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, you got a month. Yeah, we do. We have six weeks-ish. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be happy to talk with Mike as well to see. I don't know if you know Dan's last day is Friday, so Mike is. Oh, okay. Is he taking that over or? Very likely, yes. Okay, yeah. all right. So um, we, uh, yeah. What I, we've done before is we've, we've gone so far as that, and, and I think Maggie usually arranged this, but there'd be a table in the park. I think sometimes they'd even have um, barbecue there. Um, but people could come and collect bags, collect tools if they wanted them to borrow. Um, they had to bring their own gloves and stuff. And they go out not just to do trails, but other things. So um, we just haven't done it for a couple of years. I didn't want the day to go by without us. Just think there's something we want to do. Yeah. And maybe it's a dog who could clean up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, something like specific. Myers needs it so bad. Yeah. I mean, that seems, and it's not, it doesn't have an adoptee, right? Well, the hospital. Um, and did you say they had a date play? No, that was OTC. Oh, yeah. Okay. Actually, yeah, let me look. I think they actually do have a date because they um, they said it was, the last one was canceled because of weather. Let me just see what uh, she said really quickly. I'll, I'll jump back on in a minute. So maybe just it's just talking with your AmeriCorps volunteers in the city and and Clay with Adopted Trail to see if we can do something. What about an article in the newspaper? Just talking about um, National Trails Day and and you know if the AmeriCorps and others. We're going to do it to say we need volunteers and see who shows up. It'd be a nice way to highlight the adopted trail folks too who are active. Yeah. They printed some of our press releases before almost mm -hmm. verbatim. So um I don't know if any of you went to the, the meeting with the enterprise. It was pretty interesting. Um you know, a lot of times when a paper gets taken over, they just go to the national uh, news services and the locals are just, you know, it's non-existent. And um, they're doing just the opposite. They're trying to do 90% local. And, um, they're going to have weekend uh, e-paper national, but the rest will be local and state. And if you notice, since the change, uh, the first page is basically all local. And, um, you know, I think they're really hungry for, for anything they can get. I found them to be a very good partner. And so I think as we, if we, you know, think about this and come up with what the plan is. I do agree with you, it'd be a good opportunity to highlight some adopted trails volunteers and also get the larger word out. So I'd be happy to reach out to um, the Sean Cassier, one of the other reporters, once we have some more details to get this going. Do yeah. we need a subcommittee? So like Clay suggested, we can meet offline. Yeah. yeah, I think I think if we had a couple of people meet between now and I mean our next meeting is like May twenty 
fourth or something. So there's pretty much no time to do it between that meeting and June third. So we need something happening before then. We can't be more than three from this committee. So yeah, if you and Clay, if the two Sarahs and Clay, yeah, wanted good. to meet, yeah, be great. Yeah, I mean it can be more than three, but we'd have to notice. Yeah, I okay. mean for the sake of ease, let's just keep it at three. Um, does anybody else want to join? Do you, does anybody, I don't want to preclude anybody. No, I was going to say I can. I'm, I'm happy to help with a press release if Clay is too busy or something. I've done a lot of them for this committee. Okay. And yes. run it through Lisa in the city and Grant if you need it. But I don't need to be on the subcommittee. Yes. If okay. I could just then, if you want my help to do that, I, I just would need the information and then we could get it to the city. No. That would be a huge help. Love it. You can write press releases in the city. So keep it in mind, but I don't need to be on any subcommittee. Hey guys, sorry to um, be quiet. I, I've got to take this phone call. So I'm, I'm listening, but I have to, this is about my son, so. Okay. There's no one there. But. Okay. Good. That'll be good. Sweet. Okay. So Sarah, Sarah, and Clay will uh, meet offline and work with the city. Yep. Come up with some recommendations or some thoughts and have come up with the back. Thank you, guys. Um, all right. Any final Trails Day thoughts? Okay. Number seven. We're closing in on the final stretch here. Uh, social media updates, Sarah. I think we have a good process now, and we're posting like this month several times. Um, our Arbor Day and Earth Day, and we did our first feature trail of the month, so we'll continue that. And I've been making a short list of things that we can potentially highlight over the next month. So, that if anybody has anything specific they'd like to see highlighted, please. Is it with me now or email? And if the process works for you, okay. Well, we'll have the map whenever that gets done and National Trails Day mm -hmm. and NOMO May, which Clay is already working on. Mm -hmm. And dog That's etiquette, big. of course. Dog etiquette, yep. Mm -hmm. and, and as usual, the highlighted trails. So, mm -hmm. I mean, that's like a post a week at least right there. Yep. I like them. Good job, Sarah. Cool, thanks. Yeah. It seems like I get a notification that somebody's following the page, like a new person's following every mm -hmm. day, every couple of days. It's working. Yeah. <laughs> what? What's the address? Um, it's just Livingston Parks and Trails. Okay. On Facebook. So if you search that, it should pop right up. Sweet. Well, thank you for taking not only taking over social media, but posting to social media. So it's great. Uh, all right. Number eight is tree placement and planting discussion. We touched on this briefly when Mike was in the room about uh, Water Plant Park as a possible place to put some trees. But can you reiterate who? Well, we brought it up last trees? time. Faith just said it should go to the tree board. Mm -hmm. The difficulty is we were asked specifically about parks and trails location, so I didn't know if we needed to make a recommendation to the tree board or how was the protocol for recommendation. We were approached by Susan Riedel, who is with the volunteer group with trees, wanting to know if there were any parks or trails we would recommend for trees. So okay. I, I think an appropriate um uh, yeah, an appropriate move might be to recommend to the tree board that they consider, you know, adding trees in certain parks or trail areas. Is Susan going through the tree board? I mean, because it's a separate yeah. entity, really. I, I'm not aware that she's approached them, actually, to be honest with you. So that's the difficulty with having yeah. the tree board answer a request mm -hmm. that we got. So. Mm -hmm. so we can do it any way you want. Yeah. I think the only... The difficulty is where there's irrigation. There's not in a lot of places with irrigation. The only ones we know of are Water Plant Park and Bitterroot, right? And yeah. Depot Park as well. Yeah. Yeah. And there's there's a couple of trees there. Yeah, I think we're covered. <laughs> yeah. So um I mean that might be the only thing we do is just 
remind the tree board that those are the two locations where there is irrigation where trees would be appropriate. But that certainly with bitter this but well with all of them they would just have to work with the city. Yeah so and I honestly don't know because that was request was six months ago or four months ago whether it's still even open. They may have decided they may have gotten commitments for their trees. I'll say I attend those meetings. I'm happy to carry the word over there and have oh, a conversation. Great. great. Okay. Good. So that's it. All right. Cool. That brings us to our final item for the night. Congratulations. We might wrap this up by eight. Uh, <laughs> the update on the county's active transportation plan. I'm sorry. Oh, yes. Um, still working on survey. This is not much to update. So we were hoping to, I think, launch a survey monthly by the end of the week. Surveys are more complex than anticipated. They don't have a consultant, so this is all been being done kind of by a similar board. And so it's going to be a little bit before you guys launched. And then because we won't have a meeting until, I guess, the end of the month, um, the question to the committee would be, do we want to support that effort? You know, it is for Livingston residents but it will be for Park County facilities. So one of their questions in there is asking about a um, mill levy to support parks, trails, and maintenance thereof. And so um, perhaps it is important, or I don't know if the city would be interested to distribute that. I don't know if it's a question here, um, and maybe it needs to be elevated more to the to the city level. Um, but first, maybe a discussion with our board and committee if that's something that we think that we should be involved in or help support or just want to wait for the results. Is the city involved at all? That's the best of my knowledge. Now, who's um, putting together the survey and then actually going to conduct it? So Josh and Kara. Gosh, I'm gonna mess up their last names. Are on the on the board, and then they're on the blackboard, and then Kristen is the staff member. Okay. She's pretty, and she's sort of the big team at recovery um, and grant writing. And then I'm sitting on that for the current public. Um, they are deferring to me a lot because of God having gone through our own survey process for a couple of years in a row, and then as well as the active transportation bills plan, which makes me. Uh, a little nervous because they <laughs> that bringing my expertise and while I have advice, I think um, yeah, I think that maybe uh, they could use some support or help. And you know, what is that process going to look like? You know, kind of as it rolls out into a public process and actually updating the plan. Um, Are they doing the plan internally? As far as I know, for now they are. Yeah, we don't have the capacity to write grants for that uh, for that update. There is a little bit of seed funding that's available, but um, yeah, for the moment there. And that may change. Uh, I think where it intersects with our board, you know, is when they start talking about, you know, the government and the how it fits into a dog plan. Um, how they're going to roll that process, but I don't have answers at that point. Well, one question is um, well, it goes to the whole rec center thing. And I'm wondering when is, the, is it possible to get an update on where that's at in the next month or so? I'm happy to give one right now if you'd like. But yeah, because it seems to me that if that's tied in with a similar Absolutely. Um, request for a parks district of some kind, then we need to be aware of what they're asking people um, and what the city's process might be to determine the appetite for such a thing. Um, yeah, I think to I think to elaborate on that. So you know, one of the things that I 
pointed out in the survey is that while it's an active transportation update, a lot of the questions are framed around recreation park facilities because really they most of their facilities are parks. They've got one trail, which is the continuation of 89 South that will be the Heritage Trail and Rails Trail. Um, and then I don't think there's even anything in Clyde Park. Um, and so if it's going to be about facilities, recreation and commuting, or are we just gonna do or keep it as active transportation? And so I feel that some of that language needs to be clarified. And if it is going to go into the facilities, then you're absolutely right that it becomes a wellness center. You know, it starts to lean into that, that, that question of if the county is going to be involved. And it, at the moment, the questions are pretty like, you know, are you satisfied? You know, do you participate in these parks in in these facilities? What's missing? You know, kind of rating um, people's general experience, and then at the end, are you would you be willing to contribute? You know, some funding towards the development, um, maintenance, and support of of facilities. So, yeah, so it's still pretty high level, um, but I feel like maybe there's a good strategy there and maybe not miss the opportunity to align with the city more if we're, we're going down the path together. So I'll, I'll say as far as the, the recreation center wellness center project goes, <clears throat> there's about 18 and a half, almost 19 million or so that's been raised from private um donations and then there's possibly some other tax credits that may factor in so um one of those private donations several of those private donations are conditioned upon the city coming up with a, a funding plan for operating the, the facility right and so the most obvious mechanism for that is a special district as you folks all know and so the process that the city is undertaking right now, special district elections can occur at any time throughout the year. They don't have to be on a normally scheduled election day. Okay. However, if it's off a normally scheduled election day, there's an additional expense for that. <clears throat> so I'm potentially in the 10 to 15,000 range, so it's not exorbitant, but... Um, one of the grants is further conditioned upon all of that happening and passing by December of this year. I'm sure some of you know that. And so um, what if, if we were to approach and use the normally scheduled November election day, state law requires that you know that question you know be finalized for the ballot 85 days before election day. So that gets us back to August 14th that we would have to make the, the go or no go call on pursuing a special district. And so, you know, that's that's about three and a half months away from now. And so um, it seems respectful that the likelihood of the district being larger than the city of Livingston is very high. We don't have a high taxable value of real estate in or real property in the city of Livingston. And so at this point, we've been examining using larger boundaries and quite possibly using the Park High School um, district boundary. Yeah. And and so, and, and I will say, and this really probably is perhaps most germane to the county active trails um, and transport to action transportation plan would be that in some early conversations, you know, Park County is large, and it seemed like doing a countywide special district for the wellness center um, might not have the best chances of success because it's not immediately clear to everyone that folks in Wilsow, Springdale, yeah. you know, yeah. the city would would vote yes for this and agree to be taxed for it, right? And so, um, we are examining other existing districts, we do have the ability to create our own district, although that's somewhat, somewhat more cumbersome and adds a little bit of, you know, work and process to the next three and a half months or so that we have. And so, like I said, we're, we're thinking about using an existing district and the Park High District is one that makes sense for a number of reasons. Um, and so, being respectful to the county commission and their process, you know, if 
August 14th is kind of the go no go deadline for the November election. You know, my thought is to back that out 30 days to give the, the commission, the county commission, their time to do a public process. And so that puts us back to, uh, you know, mid July. And that's certainly, yeah, um, about two and a half months away there. And so I've, we've got, as a city, we've got two and a half months to um, evaluate location options solidify the programming of the building, um, basically what's going to be in the building, how large is it going to be, and then also finalize kind of those operating um, questions as far as how will the building be staffed and funded. And so the, the good news is the, the Four Ranges Community Recreation Foundation has done a lot of work on programming. Um, we do have a survey that is um, being finalized and I'm hoping to go out on Friday to just kind of reconfirm some of those elements of the programming. Um, Survey going out to the public? Yeah, yeah. And, and and it'll also have, it'll have demographic questions, it'll have programming related questions, and then it'll also have questions related to the taxing district itself and people's, you know, eagerness uh, to be a part of the district and and also kind of their you know established what is their willingness to to pay you know at what level would they support the district right and so um currently i am working with partners to try to identify three to six viable locations for the, the center um i we've got I, what i think are some very good possibilities that are coming to the surface with our conversations with you know the county um and, and other public partners and also some private landowners as well. Um, I will say our focus has been more on publicly owned lands because uh, quite honestly, the cost of those is a little bit lower um, and, and some of those hurdles are a little easier as far as transferring land between government agencies. And so um, <clears throat> I am actively in those conversations and my hope is that within the next three to four weeks, we will have Again, three to six sites that the community can evaluate, and we will do evaluate and evaluation and kind of show the suitability of those sites relative to one another and also the existing site. And and the goal really is, you know, to come up with a preferred location um, <clears throat> sometime in early to mid June, and kind of we're a little bit lucky in that some of the programming conversations are not site specific. And so that's why the survey is going out this week. And, and you know, I fully expect to have most of, of our responses with, within two weeks and so into early May. And so mid to late May, um, we will, you know, take all of that data, um, pour through it, and then start those programming conversations in, you know, basically mid-May to mid-June, uh, recognizing that hopefully we have the preferred location selected in early June. And so then, you know, the, the fortunate part is many of the sites have similar attributes. And so the building and the layout of the building itself may not be entirely site specific. Um, of course, the larger site plan would be site specific, which is why we need to kind of have that information by early to mid June so that we can translate kind of that building concept floor layout to a larger site layout. And again, you know, have all of that solidified by mid mid July, <laughs> so we can pass it over to the county and then move on to the process. So, so hopefully that's given a little bit of insight into the process that we're following. So, is is the expectation that the district would um, could pay for not just the wellness center but other parks and tra trails projects? So that's that's one thing that we're evaluating right now. Um, you know, I'll, I'll be quite honest with you. A recreation center that operates from 6 a.m. to 9 or 10 p.m., which is somewhat the expectation of, of this center at this point, um, <clears throat> is, is somewhat of a costly endeavor from a labor standpoint. Um, buildings, generally public buildings, should be operated by one person just for staff safety reasons. And, and then recreation athletic facilities like this um, often need more um, because of you know kind of some of the health risks of people engaging in athletic activity. Certainly, if we've got a pool, which yeah, yeah. seems very likely, and, and then you know there's <clears throat> unfortunately there's really frankly the safety aspect of 
you know, having locker rooms where folks are um, disrobing and bathing and all of that stuff introduces opportunities for nefarious activity. So there's actually a security um, requirement and, and a, a lot of a lot of gyms have policies that those types of rooms have to be patrolled every, you know, three to seven minutes or so, just mm -hmm. to ensure that nothing's happening there. And so I am really, really evaluating the function and the operation of the building to ensure that it's something that's cost effective, um, because this will be a tax that is, is borne by, you know, households. And so, yeah, um, so yeah, it's, uh, <clears throat> It's it's not obvious to me that we can afford to operate this building as well as enhance you know parks and trails care all in one levy that is palatable to the community. They're still kind of crunching those numbers, but it it seems like there's the possibility those might be two separate requests um, on the same ballot. No, potentially not on the same ballot because. Um, like I kind of pointed out, there's only about you know three and a half, four months here really for us to, to line up um, the wellness center thing. If that's even going to go forward on this November ballot, and I'll be quite honest, I don't think that that's a foregone conclusion to a lot of the folks that I'm working with. Um, you know, as as difficult as it is to turn away a large donation, you know, it, it seems clear that we can going to the voters is a difficult thing. And, you know, something that gets rejected really has to be compellingly different before we would bring it back to the voters. Otherwise, we wouldn't expect kind of a different result. And so um, it's it's apparent to many of us involved that we really only have one chance at this. And so we want to make sure if we ask the voters that we think we have a high likelihood of passage. And so if we go this May, that is a very, very tall task. And um, and then to, to layer on a, a larger effort um, <clears throat> is, is an even taller task, I would say that. So um, I am, if the effort moves forward this year in November, I think it will be rather focused on, on the center itself. If it doesn't move forward this November, if we put it out until 2024, I think there's a lot of opportunities to have a much larger conversation and, and look at the issues. Okay. And why do you say that? Why do you, what changes like between November and next spring, for example, mm -hmm. to to be able to add a a parks district for other things that can't go forward in November? Mm -hmm. um, well, I'd say there's a few things. Um, you know, the the parks district has not is not something that's really been not that the wellness center has been very publicized or talked about, um, but it is at least something yeah. that's been on people's radar. I think the park district a little bit less so. So there's more of an education component to it. Um, I think as far as costing out the district, I think there's a little bit of work to do there as as far as you know, kind of costing out the capital projects and phasing the capital projects and really coming up with that compelling story for voters of why to support this, right? Because we would need to show, you know, I think kind of meaningful and measurable improvement in the park system over certainly the first five years, right? If we're going to convince people. And so, you know, I just, I don't necessarily, as I look at it, I don't have that comfort level that we have kind of that detail and we have that compelling story yet to tell the voters. Yeah. I think we've got pieces of information there, and I think we could weave something together, but it is a very, very large education effort. I mean, taking a few things to the voters, and um, you know, the, the last one I did was a fire station that we passed by six votes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and after Landslide. after a five year process, and and after it had been defeated by voters, you know, three years prior, because we didn't have a compelling story. Um, to tell as to why it was needed. And so, yeah, in, in the current environment, new taxes, I think, are very difficult anywhere. Um, well, yeah, and I think that's, um, I mean, it makes sense. It's just discouraging because I think the likelihood of getting a parks district, if this is successful, is even slimmer down the road because this will be a pretty big increase as it is. Yeah, the only, the only thing that I would offer, and, and 
you know, please, we're very, very early in this, you know, kind of conceptualizing the district process. Districts, you know, special districts are such actually that they've got a little bit of a different um, ability to tax than say a city or a county does. And they can change their assessment level a little bit easier than we can. And it wrote at a different rate more quickly than we can. And so, you know, as we're going through this, um, I'm certainly I'm going to evaluate, you know, the language that's put out there to see if we can't leave the opportunity for that special district to potentially fund other improvements or other projects that are not strictly tied to the, the road to center. Mm -hmm. So I do think there's an opportunity there, but. And the parks master plan will have more of a breakdown that's helpful. What's the time frame on that? On the parks master plan? Yeah. Um, we have to prepare the scope of work and still go out to um, RFP with it and all of that stuff. And that'll so, be this year, though. That's my expectation yeah, sure. in 2023. Yeah. Because the expectation would be that would give you some of that information along with Trails and Active Transportation Plan mm -hmm. to explain a parks district. Right. Okay. And, and I, I would offer that, you know, the whatever work comes out of that county process, mm -hmm. um, you know, I I think that, you know, potentially talking about one larger countywide parks district, trails district, recreation district might be something that that's very palatable. And actually, because of the, you know, if there are projects that are countywide and it's something that's appealing to that whole voter base, mm -hmm. you know, I the the taxable value of property within the county is much larger than it is within either the city or the high school district. And so when we look about spreading that cost over, it actually brings it down pretty substantially. And so, I mean, and just, you know, to put numbers to it, mm -hmm. I would say that the Park County High School District has two and a half to three times the taxable value um, as the city of Livingston. Wow. And, and then when we back it out, to the full park county, it, it pretty much more than doubles or close to doubles um, from the, the district, you know, from the, the high school That's district, right? Which so, you know, we just orders of magnitude larger than, than just the city's taxable value. But they might not be able to rationalize very many projects countywide mm -hmm. compared to just what we could do in the city, mm -hmm. you know. So, no, and that's why I think it would be interesting to see what the work product, you know, the deliverable that comes out of that, that county yeah. effort is. Yeah. Uh, and like I said, I'm not, I'm not ruling it out. I just, we have a very compressed time frame. Yep. Yep. Um, and, and we have, a, you know, a, we've got a difficult story, I think, to tell to some voters. Yeah, because what I've heard all along is the Parks and Trails Committee might have a role in helping to um, advance whatever gets on the ballot and we hadn't had an update for a while so it's like how soon is that happening and what kind of education goes on and and all that kind of stuff so thank you for doing that that's helpful uh yeah no and if if you've got any questions please don't hesitate to ever reach out to me and i would say you know i i certainly can't um advocate too much as far as how people should behave in the ballot box or in the voter booth, but I would I'd certainly welcome any community assistance if you know we do put the question to the voters, certainly in, in getting out the vote whatever way it goes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it would be helpful if there's a question that could be structured if it's countywide and I mean if it's surveys it's hard, right? Like distribution then. How does it reach people? I think a lot of people in the county aren't necessarily on email or Facebook or maybe text. I've heard text is like during the flood was the best way people communicated. Um, yeah. Well, Sarah, don't forget when you're working with the county on their survey. Yeah. We did that survey monkey that Lisa pulled together. It was okay. after the city did the survey on internal. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So they looked at they looked at the city and so the part the the first methodology was to do almost a carbon copy of the city so that we could compare oh, results okay. in the beginning. But then when you start thinking about the question, it's like, well, we don't have the same facilities. So some of the questions were kind of funny. And then they looked at Bozeman. And so right now it's kind of a hodgepodge. And then we're like, but wait, we're doing an active transportation plan. Right. right? You know, so yeah. so so what is it? What what is the question that we're actually trying to get after? And so we're wrestling with that okay. a little bit. But um, but yeah, that has been a great resource. 
Okay. Has there been any discussion with the school district and their property for uh, possible siting of that facility? That's a fantastic question that I would prefer not to answer at this time. Yeah. Just thinking of Washington school clothing and then on the north side, you know, there's, I don't know how many acres they have. Um, I appreciate the suggestions and um, please know that, that we are evaluating all opportunities at this point with all partners. I think you probably were. But sometimes school districts and cities don't talk to each other. Well, I'm on the I'm on the superintendent's community advisory council, and so we have lunch together at least once a month, sometimes more than that. And I can tell you that I've had a number of conversations with the superintendent this week alone. So, yeah. and neither of those are a floodplain. <laughs> There are a lot of attractive attributes <laughs> to some of the parcels that, that have been mentioned tonight, yes. All right. Any other? We blew right past the 8 o'clock deadline. Uh, all right. Well, I think we're going to public comments. Any final board comments for tonight? All right. Cool. Well, that's it. Then do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion. Second. Eight sixteen. Good work. Dude. Thanks, you guys. Um, Thanks, Blair. Hey, do you want to take these maps? Or